So Elena, you can join. What? If you have questions from the sister, yes, please. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم إنا نسألك بأسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العلى يا رحمن ويا رحيم يا منان ويا كريم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا عما تنفعنا به يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك علما يقربنا منك ويدلنا عليك ويرشدنا إليك اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك عيشة هنية وميتة سوية ومرضا غير مخزن ولا فاضح وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to open our hearts and our minds to benefit from knowledge وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to bless us with knowledge that gets us closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to grant us insight nor in our hearts that we can know the truth as truth and follow it وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to show us falsehood as falsehood and help us avoid it وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى guidance we are in dire need of the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were not to be guided if it were not for the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why in every salat, we are required to start to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every salat. Ihdina salat al mustaqim Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right path. 17 times a day, we, we say at least 17 times a day. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these blessed moments to guide us to the right path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand what He is pleased with, not what we, what pleases our desires, what pleases our ego, what pleases our passions, what pleases our point of view. So many times we tend to close our hearts and our minds other than to what is uh, pleasing our 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 desires and our point of view the way we look things this is not the attitude of the believer the attitude of the believer is to come natural and try to understand what allah is pleased with and this is the right thing but the art the attitude of non-believer is to pick and choose yeah, that doesn't doesn't fulfill uh, doesn't fulfill me doesn't go with my point of view then it's nonsense right that's not the attitude of the believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al-ahzab وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ there is no way for believing man or believing woman to have a say to even have uh, to double think something after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something. If Allah says black, it's black. No matter what you see it, it's black. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says white, it's white, no matter what you see. It. The, right, the, the, the right attitude that sometimes you doubt your, your, your senses and you, doubt, you don't doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there is sometimes that you see something the wrong way, isn't it? You mishear something. So my sense could, could be mistaken, isn't it? Isn't it that sometimes you think you heard something, but it, it didn't hear it the right way? Then sometimes you see something, but you didn't see it the right way? So our senses could make mistakes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what says is the truth. So as we are coming here to this session, inshallah ta'ala, as follow up, to the previous sessions, we have to re-establish this reality. We are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what makes us unique. That our rationality, our senses are judged by Al-Quran and the Sunnah.
This is the highest authority, Quran and Sunnah, because the revelation, because from Allah. Anything else has to be, to be judged, to be subjected to the, to the revelation. Anything else. My rationality could be different from your rationality, could be different from your rationality. So which rationality you are going to make the standard? It has to be the revelation. It has to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah ta'ala today, we are going to follow up on the, the, the previous session. We are going to answer questions again. I'm not going to give a lecture. It's going to be casual, inshallah ta'ala, discussion where we'll, you can comment, you can push back, right? As long as you, all of us, let's establish intention. I am seeking the truth. And then you can, inshallah ta'ala, we can have a discussion. And inshallah ta'ala, hopefully, we can arrive together to what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, I would like to say something. Sorry, and I will conclude with it, inshallah, we open the floor for, for Q&A. So many Muslims know that they are obliged to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to their actions. So many Muslims, they know that they cannot eat certain things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like it. So many Muslims know that they cannot drink certain things because are prohibited, alcohol and any type of toxication, right? So many Muslims know that they cannot dress certain way. So many Muslims know that they cannot lie. They cannot backbite. So these are actions. So many Muslims know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls our actions. But what so many Muslims don't know is also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should consider Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our thoughts, in our views. It's not up to you to formulate point of view. You have to learn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he says about something. It's not up to you to formulate view, whether it's political view, social view, whatever, economic. There is, there is something in the Quran Kareem about it. So, so many times we are conscious about our actions. So, I have to dress certain way. I cannot eat other than the biha. I cannot dress this way. I cannot. That's good. But don't you know also that your point of view, world views, also has to be judged by the Quran and Sunnah. It's not up to you to formulate an opinion. This is right, this is wrong. This, no. You have to go to the revelation. We Muslims, once something unique about us is our religion is comprehensive. It's not like cover certain rituals. We go to the masjid Saturday for certain hours, ask God for forgiveness, and for the rest of the week, we live the life that we desire, right? God only in the church, only in the mosque. No, God's everywhere. God's everywhere. Every aspect of our lives judged by the revelation. Our likes, our dislikes by the revelation. Our, our love and our hate by revelation. Our business, our purchases, our marriage, our divorce, how we raise our children, it's by the revelation, right? It's also how we formulate opinion about the world. Now there is a debate, right? Political debate, pro-choice, pro-life pro this, pro that. You, it's not up to you to take a standard, to take a stand. I am, oh, I think this is right. I think, no, no. You have to go, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this. And guess what? You have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this thing. Doesn't require you an action. Now, if you adopt an opinion, opinion not necessarily doing things or not doing things, it's point of view, but also our views has to be has to align with the Quran and Sunnah. I would like us to understand this. Our deen is holistic. Our deen is comprehensive. It's not like some rituals needs to be done. Pray five times a day, fast Ramadan, maybe cover your hair, and then you hold views that are contradicting the very essence of what means ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are slaves to the Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created us. 
He is, He has been bestowing upon us His blessings and we have to obey Him in every single moment in our life. If we don't do that, we strive to do that because that is the objective of our being here, brothers and sisters. Inshallah Ta'ala, I will open the floor for questions. Go ahead, Adwan. And also, Sister Alina, if you have questions, Inshallah Ta'ala, will address them. You can... You can raise your hand, inshallah ta'ala, if you have anything. Please go ahead, Allah. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There are some questions that were not answered last time. Maybe we'll start with those. Uh, in the meantime, that same number is uh, functioning. If someone wants to text new questions, Hussam is sick. Please make dua for him. So there's no uh, fancy, Allah, you know, PowerPoint or whatnot. But the number is, if anyone wants to just jot it down real quick, 518 seven six eight one eight one zero five one eight seven six eight one eight one zero and i have it if you want to ask later so sheikh um one of the questions that i asked multiple times is what about people that are in the medical profession that uh, may be performing abortions what if they have to perform an abortion that we islamically uh, do not agree with yeah, that's, that, that question is similar to if I am a doctor and I am, I am, I am, I am uh, needed to do surgery for transgender. Should I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? No. I cannot do it. It's haram. So, and, and when we, every, in every profession, we have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are certain legitimate cases of abortion and you can do that. And there are, you have, if you are in that profession, you have to learn the fiqh of abortion. There is so much to be learned. What I shared with you last time is a very, very, very brief summary. But there is so much to be studied about the fiqh of abortion in our religion. And that, guess what? Everything you engage in your life in Sharia, you are obliged to learn about it. If you are doing business, you must, you must, you are obliged to learn the fiqh of finance and business before you engage. Because you are dealing with transactions and business and selling and buying. You have to learn how to do it Islamically. If you are getting married, you must learn the fiqh of marriage, right? Before you get children, you must learn how to, le how to raise your children Islamically and so on. If you are going to Hajj, you must learn the fiqh of Hajj before you go to the Hajj. So if you are a doctor, if you are in this field, you must learn the fiqh of medicine. There is so much fiqh of it. So the simple answer to this is, if it is haram, clear cut, then definitely you cannot proceed and do it. And alhamdulillah, uh, there must be a room to accommodate you. People have to respect your religious point of view. And you have to be wise how to articulate the Islamic approach, inshallah ta'ala. But definitely, if the case is not leg legitimate Islamically, you are not allowed at all to violate the sanctity of life. We believe what are the cases that are haram abortion. What are the cases? It's when the sanctity of life, right? So if you are proceeding with abortion that is not allowed, we mean, meaning you are violating the sanctity of life. And you cannot do that Islamically. It's a major sin to violate the sanctity of life. So the simple answer is you have to, number one, you have to learn the fiqh of medicine particularly the fiqh of abortion in very, very thorough details. And number two, you cannot do abortion that is not Islamically halal. That is not Islamically halal. And I know so many doctors, not only about abortion, about so many things, because it is against their uh, belief, they tell, I cannot do this. And they are respected and they are accommodated because, alhamdulillah, we have a society, we have a system, that respect everybody's faith and religious point of view. Next. 
Uh, next question, uh, someone was asking, uh, in the cases of rape, that in today's society, most cases of rape are not, um, I mean, the rapist is not convicted, right? And the rape itself is not kind of um, declared that this happened as rape. And so that's one of the reasons that the choice or the option for abortion is important because then that woman has the option without having to go through the corrupt legal route to get the hukum that it was a rape, then they're allowed to get the abortion. And you may have touched a little bit upon yes, the last I time. Think, I think we have touched upon this uh, previously, but as I said uh, last time, uh, we cannot resolve one issue by creating another issue. This is the Islamic, this is, this is al-abqariya for Islam. What is genius about Islam is, it is divine religion. It is not man-made. It's not like some legislators who are corrupted getting in the capital and trying to make legislation because they are getting money from this lobby or that lobby. Islam is divine law and religion, right? This is why Islam does not resolve one issue on the expense of what? Of another issue. Now the case of rape is a serious issue. And we as Muslims, especially in the states that don't consider this, we have to make a case. We have to fight for them to get the right of abortion in the states that they don't have that right. But that doesn't make us as Muslims give green light for any abortion because there is a rape. No. The rape has to be dealt with and we have to give them a right and we have to fight for it and we have to make a case. Yet, there are types of abortion that we will never approve of because they are what? Because they are what? I would like to hear you, brothers and sisters, because they are what? The sanctity of life. No, because there are certain victims, women who are raped, we have to fight for them. We have to stand with them. We have to make a case, even in the states that they ban abortion altogether. We as Muslims, if we would like to be active, we can make a case for them. We can stand with them. But for this particular portion, but you cannot convince me that because there is a rape, now let's fight for pre-choice because everybody has the right. Now how about the right of the baby who is in the womb of his mother, who is five or six months, who is fighting for this right? So Islam is holistic. The Islam what? Is comprehensive. Fight for the right of every being, not even human being, for every being. Right? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi prohibited even cutting a tree without any legitimate why why you are doing it haphazardly you cannot just cut a tree for no reason you cannot kill an ant for no reason you cannot kill an animal for no reason it's prohibited so islam gave the sanctity the, the dignified every being every being is dignified and given a right so answer this question we feel bad for this reality and this reality also has to be addressed in more profound way what are the causes for rape let's let's step back a little bit and let's discuss now of course we make we are with the abortion when it comes to rape as long as as long as before as long as it is before what 120 days however morally speaking we have to have, as society, we have to have a discussion. What are the root causes for rape? Why are we shying away from discussing the realities as they are? Why are we dealing with the symptoms instead of going to the root causes? Nobody would like to discuss the root causes of these sicknesses in the society, these illnesses in society. Everybody is fighting about the symptoms. Because morality is absent from the, our societies. Because we destroyed every moral code in our society. Because God is absent from our societies. Because we created a society that is human-centered, not God-centered. Because we created a society that is so materialistic that they don't have any, any reference. And you find people doing so much evil because there is no reference. 
You cannot control society by rules and regulations. The most profound way to discipline any society is faith, is religiosity, is moral values. And we live in a society that is promote, promoting godlessness. We live in a society that is promoting what? Godlessness. Do you know what it means? Godlessness? Remove God from the equation. It's a human sentence. It's all about me. And then we see corruption in finance, in economy, in politics, in education system, everywhere. Why? Because there is no morals. There is no akhlaq. We don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't believe on the day of judgment. We don't believe that there is a time where we are going to stand in front of the Lord and we will be judged for every single action we have done in this life. So if you'd like to discuss the root causes, this, uh, this is the true discussion. If there is anything as Muslim community we can provide to this society is this. It's about morals, about morality. We cannot... We cannot compete in wealth, we cannot compete in, in politics, we cannot compete in economy, but we can compete. We have treasure that nobody has, Allah. We have our deen. And there is a solution for every single issue in this state. So people who are asking us to take a side because of these issues, we tell them, no, no, we have a better solution. As I told you last time, we are doing a disservice for our society just by adopting this be, be, being with the left or with the right. We can provide something better. Allah Ta'ala, Ala wa Ala. Now, um, the next question, you mentioned this as well last time, but it was asked um, that if the majority of abortions in America are before 120 days, you kind of just answered this. Yeah. I don't know if I should ask it again. Okay, go ahead. That why shouldn't we, until we have a solution, right? Until we promote this Islamic solution, why shouldn't we support pro-choice until we get to that point? Yeah, and I think I will add to this question, the, the, the question that I have here. Uh, somebody asked also, why don't we take the less of two evils? So... Pro-choice is problematic, pro-life is problematic, right? So, but according to this data, most abortion prior to 120 days, why don't we Muslims, until we provide better solution to our society, why don't we take the less of the two evils, which is pro, which is pro? Huh? Depends on whom you ask, who is the less of the two evils? right some people think the pro-choice is the less of two evils why because in the essence of it you are giving choice to the women to decide for themselves and most of the abortion in reality happens between be before 120 days but what most people don't understand in this approach is there is an ideological issue in this it's more problematic than the abortion itself the pro-choice is built on ideology. Do you know what is it ideology, brothers and sisters? What is the ideology behind pro-choice? My body, my choice. It's my freedom. This is the ideology. The ideology of freedom. Just, just wait a second, Michelle. I will take your question. Can we accept this, my body, my choice? Sisters, I would like to hear from the sisters. Is it your body? It is not. I know in this society looks awkward, what I'm saying, looks backward, looks out of the, this universe. Maybe I came from March or I came from another, uh, another uh, I don't know. But this is what this the fundamental of Islam. It's not my body. You don't own it. The very, okay, my body, my choice also give me a right to put an end to my life, isn't it? Isn't it? I can suicide. Is it moral to commit suicide? Based on every culture, every religion, every society, it's not moral to commit suicide. Why? Because it's not your body. It's a man from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you are obliged to care of the aman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not your body, neither my body. And that doesn't only apply to women. It's not like, like man, their body, and women, they're not body. This is how it's being presented. To make a fight between man and woman, feminist, blah, 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 blah. No. So ideologically, it's so problematic. My body, my choice. It is not mine. It's Allah. And I am servant of Allah. Allah told me to cover this, I cover this. Allah to, told me not to, to, uh, to, to put lahya, I put lahya. Allah told me to, uh, to certain times not to touch my hair. When you are hajj, I don't touch. It's not my body. Right? And you are obliged to take uh, treatment when you are sick. It's not an option. When you are sick, is, is it your body you can choose not to take treatment? No. You are obliged to take treatment. Because it's not your body. You have to take care of it until the last moment. When Allah to dis decides to take his amana, Allah does so. But until then, every single second, you must take care of the amana. This is why you have to be healthy. You have to exercise. Because it's amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to exercise. You have to eat well. Not to eat too much. Because it's amana. Right? So the idea, so some people thinking that pro-choice is less evil, it looks like it's less evil. But ideologically, it is so contradicting to the very essence of La ilaha illallah. La ilaha means, I don't have freedom. I am slave. Slave of freedom don't get together. I am saying it loudly. We are slaves. We are, we are not free. We are being slave to Allah free you from your desires. Free you from following your temptations. Free you from being slaves to social media. Free you from being slave to, the, to, to globalism, to, to, to celebrities, to money, to food. You are slaves to the Lord and free from anything else. And the moment you reject being slaves to Allah, you become slaves to very, very, very low materialistic things. You become slaves to your desires. You became slaves to sex. You became slaves to this. You became slaves to that. It's very, very low materialistic life. I rather be slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I rather be. I know saying this in the 21st century looks, I am speaking from from the moon but this is what is our faith so my body my choice is what it's against la ilaha illallah because la ilaha means i am slave of allah i am obedient to allah i am the servant of allah i die i do what he says whether i like it or no nobody wants to get up four in the morning interrupt his sweet dreams Right? In comfortable bed, in cold night, to take wudu. I'm not talking about a house in Latham or Clifton Park where you have heat and you have a heat system and very comfortable. I'm talking about before then. People used to wake up four in the morning, very cold nights. They had to leave their house to make wudu. And nobody would like to do those. It's not comfortable, it's not convenient, but it's not up to me. So there is a point where there is only joy and happiness. This is Jannah. But in dunya, it's test. So the answer to this question, why don't we take the less of the two evils? My question to you, what is the less of two evils? Our point of view, both are equally evil. Both are equally, I don't want to say maybe evil, maybe this is very wrong, both are equally problematic and wrong. Because pro-choice contradicting the very concept of la ilaha illallah. Pro-life in the way it's presented, it's a hypocrite system. They, they preserve the life, the life before the baby born, but they don't care about the life of human beings who are walking on earth. Which type of pro-life is this? They protect, they fight for the life of the, the fetus, but the life of the black communities, the life of the Muslim communities, 
are priceless, don't have any value. Like they don't feel any bad when they kill million people in Iraq, right? When they slaved an entire generation of black community. This is don't have any value. But the fetus in the all oh, that is sanctity of life. Which type of hypocrisy is this? So this why to us we cannot adapt neither one of them. We have a better prescription. We have a better solution that preserves the sanctity of life and take into consideration all the situations of the health of the mother, the, the, the mothers who are victims, the women who are victims of rape or any other things. They are preserved, protected, taken care of, yet the sanctity of life is preserved. I hope that does make, does that make sense? I, I, I don't want to keep talking. I would like to, to, to the echo from you. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Does it make sense, sisters? Does it make sense to you? I'm sure. All right? <laughs> well, go ahead. One question. I think this is a very uh, uh, valid and important question. I do believe that there is still Islamophobia in this society. I stu still believe that being Muslim in this society is not an easy task. I do believe that. But I do believe also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us to fit in and hide and turn away from challenges. Allah did not create us to make money and live comfortably, seek the higher degrees, get the best careers, make the most money, and don't, 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 don't put yourself at risk at all. That's not the purpose of life. That's not the purpose of life. So we Muslims, we have to be, we have to be, strong enough to represent what khilafa means. Allah created us on earth to present al khilafa, to be khulafa. And khulafa means to fight for good, to, uh, to stand for goodness and fight evil. And fighting for goodness and fighting evil has never been easy at any time since Allah created Adam. It's not unique to our time. Every community, in every society, in every era in history, they were persecuted, they were humiliated, they were, they were, they were, they were. It's not unique to us. So my point is, regardless of what Muslim community is facing in the US, it is much, much, much easier than so many other Muslims what they are facing in different parts of the world or what happened to the Muslims in the first, second, and third century. There were a time there were a time in the early Islam where Islam was only in four or five individuals. Saying La ilaha illallah means you will be cut into pieces. Right? That was the time. Yet, that was, a, that was not an excuse at that time to give up, to hide, to fit in. Let alone in time where with all the challenges, but we have to admit there is a decent recognition of the Islamic being in this land. 
there is enough freedom and room and respect to the Muslims from so many Americans. Alhamdulillah, we have to recognize this. Yes, we cannot deny that there is Islamophobia. We cannot deny that there is challenges. But it's not as tense, as severe as it used to be, number one. And no matter how severe it is, no matter how risky it is, it will never be an excuse for us to give up. It will never be. So my point is, Alhamdulillah, we are in better shape, much, much in better place. Yet, the follow-up is we have to be wise in what are the priorities. We have to be wise how to present our views. And we have to be wise where to start. We have to be wise in our uh, alignments with this political camp or that political camp. We have to work with people uh, in, for the common good, right? So I believe that Muslims are in good shape in the United States. They are in a very, very good position compared to so many other Muslims, right? I came from a land where supposedly an Islamic country, right? There's so many rights that I have here I don't have in that there. I, religious rights. I used to go Algeria, listen to this. I am saying this is a live stream. And so many Algerians might be hearing what I'm saying. I used to pray Salat al-Dohr at school hiding from my teachers. Salat al-Dohr. And if I am catched, I will be punished. Because I'm praying Salat al-Dohr in the school. All of you here, you will be recognized, you will be honored to go and pray Salat al-Dohr respectfully with your dignity. Isn't it? Isn't it? For decades, I'm talking about Algeria, but you can talk about so many other lands. For decades, women with hijab cannot get certain, they cannot, they cannot go to certain schools. They cannot get certain positions. They cannot work in the media. They cannot enter the military. They cannot enter this department, that department. Why? Just because you are wearing hijab. And same thing for Turkey, Tunisia, so many. We have rights here that so many Muslims don't have it in their land because of dicta dictatorship, because of this, because of that. So I believe there are challenges, but let's be appreciative as well for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also appreciative for our society. Society that they host us and allowed us to practice our faith and I know there are deficiencies. I know there are challenges, but we'll appreciate what we have and then we seek to have inshallah ta'ala better position. So Muslims can practice their faith. As a matter of fact, Muslims can invest in this society and there are so many people who are thirsty to the truth. I speak to so many people in different places, right? And when I present to them whether discussion is about political issues or moral issues or this, when I share with them the Islamic point of view, they just they are marveled, they are amazed. And they are saying, why in this society we don't hear about this? So we are the ambassadors to this society. Don't, maybe you talk to a person in the waiting room in a doctor office. Just talking, you don't have to give a lecture in university. You don't have to be a journalist. Just approaching, leaving the hem of Islam living for Islam, having a project in your life that presenting Islam is, 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 is a task. And then you implement it every single day. It takes time. But one day people will appreciate this great faith that humanity never seen light like Islam. So this is my point of view and Allah knows best. Let's take other questions. Maybe I'll come back to you later on. But we have to be fair, inshallah ta'ala. Go ahead, Argo. Sister Lena, if you have questions. Okay. Um, someone asked, what are the consequences of a haram abortion? Like, what's, what's at stake if someone... Yeah, abortion? the haram abortion is killing a human being. Simple. If... 
the ruh is blown, is killing human being. Can you kill a person? Can you kill a person? Can you kill a person? Are you sure? Why? Haram. So abortion after certain time is killing a human being. What is the consequence of killing a human being? Severe, severe consequences. Severe, severe consequences. Yet, yet there are cases, very, very serious cases, where abortion is allowed even after 120 days. You remember them? You remember them? If the life of the mother is at risk, then we preserve the life of the mother even. It is very unfortunate. It's very painful for us to do it, but it is allowed to do it. But abortion, after the, law, the, the soul is blown into the fetus, is like it's equivalent to killing a human being. Before that, it is, it is wrong, but it's not like that. It doesn't have the consequence. Before 120 days, it is something wrong. It's problematic, but it doesn't have the same consequence as killing a human being. Right? Allah knows best. I, I, like, can we take a break from your questions and see the audience? Brothers, do you have any questions? Sisters? Yes, sister. Go ahead. Um, we talk about um, what rights children have, but what about unborn children? Like, I don't know if you touched upon this, but like, what rights do they have? What the rights of an unborn child? Like, what is his or her rights? A fetus? Yeah. What What we were talking about is about the right of the unborn fetus. Yes. What I'm What I'm asking is, what are their rights? What are the rights? Yeah, their rights. Their I don't. Can you elaborate more in the questions? What do you mean by the rights? So we talk about children's rights when they're born, but what about when the Oh, okay, okay. So she, her question is, what are the rights of the unborn fetuses upon us? Like the right of children upon us is education, give them a good name, take care of them, uh, tarbiya, uh, right? So what are the rights of the unborn fetuses? Well, there are so many rights. If you go to the books of fiqh, there are so many rights. One of them is you have to eat well. If you go to the books of, of fiqh, in addition that you as a human being, you have to take care of your health. Now it's not you only. You are carrying two souls in your body. So you have to eat well to keep yourself healthy and to keep the other life in your body healthy. And for your spouse, you have to take care of the two souls that they are in one body so you cannot upset your partner you cannot upset your partner are you hearing me you cannot upset them all the times but especially when they are carrying another soul right because now hurting them in any way you are hurting the, the born human being and you are hurting another unborn human being so the sin is is multiplied doubled the sin is multiplied but in addition to this if you go to the books of fiqh when they talk about they they list these rights separately man and woman for the man they said you have to choose the right carrier for the unborn. Meaning you have to choose the best mother to carry these human beings. You have to choose a person of faith, honesty, dignity, akhlaq, tarbiyah. Before even they, they got pregnant, you have to choose the best one. Exactly the same when it comes to the mother. You have to choose the best father for this human being a father that could be a role model father that will fear, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth we have studied that when it comes to حقوق, uh, and also of the rights upon them is to well, 
if, if you listen to some of our salaf, they used to read the Quran. They used to teach the unborn Al Quran. Have you heard about it? Scientifically, the fetuses develop the, the quality of healing early time. You know that, right? At 19 weeks, 20 weeks, 21 weeks, they already developed the quality of healing. So of the, their rights upon us is to hear good things, particularly to hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by experience, those fetuses that they have been hearing the Quran al kareem while they were in the womb of their mothers, when they are born into life, they are familiar with the Quran al kareem So many of them finish memorizing entire Quran al kareem at the age of five and six. Why? Because even when they were in the womb of their mother, they are familiar with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many things that rise upon us. If I keep listing them, that requires a lecture by themselves. But basically, they have to be in good environment. They have to be in righteous environment. SubhanAllah, so many times we think that we cannot lie in front of our children because they pick up the bad habits from us. Wallahi, it is very similar to the unborn baby. If you lie, even if they are in there, they are picking up these bad habits. If you scream, if you lie, if you are nervous, if you are disappointed, if you are going through challenges, all this is affecting them. So you have to provide them healthy, righteous environment, though they are still in the womb of their mothers. Inshallah ta'ala, maybe one day we can elaborate more in the, on this subject. Any other question? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. We still have a list of questions, but go ahead. It's not working? There is conspiracy against you. Alhamdulillah. I'm just joking. I joke around all the time, so please. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. JazakAllah khair. Also, this is, I think this is also a very important question. And I think this question should lead us to ask maybe more broader question. What is the role of Muslim community in this society? With what role are we playing in this society? Besides preserving our identity, besides be staying a Muslim, besides practicing our faith as Muslims, what are we providing to our fellow Americans? Brothers and sisters who are sharing uh, with us this land. What are we providing to them? And I think this is a very serious question. And there is so much we can criticize about the Muslim community, but also we have to understand how 
baby is the Muslim community in this land. Muslim community in this land is very, very, very big community. Not only in terms of size, in terms of existence, in terms of age. Muslim community here, how long? How old is the Muslim community here? How many decades? It's just a few decades, right? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. I'm not talking about the, I understand the history behind it, but I'm talking about the, the organized Muslim community. Of course, Islam has been in this land from day one. But everybody knows what happened to these early Muslims. Everybody knows how they, how they were treated. Everybody knows how, war, how they were enslaved. But I'm talking about the organized, the apparent, the, the Muslim community. It's very, very new. This is why the Muslim community for the last decades, they have tried to focus on building institutions, building masajid, building Islamic schools, try to save the youth from from losing their faith. But it is about the time for the Muslim community to be active at the national level, to do other services to the community. So we have to be organized to help in so many levels, not only about women's rights or about the cases of the abortion. There are much, much more things that Muslims has to be vocal, has to be I was listening to Sheikh a few days ago. I think, I don't know how many of you were there when he was talking about how many children, how many children in this land go to public school hungry from early morning until they come back, they don't eat anything. How many Muslims? If you hear the statistics, the numbers is very scary, right? So what Muslims, what are the Muslims doing about this? Nothing. So Muslims are inactive in so many levels, not only in this. I'm not saying this because I'm proud of it. No, I'm criticizing the Muslim community. We have to get organized. This is why you, the youth, brothers and sisters, the new generation who are fresh, know the society, equipped with knowledge, right? We have to get organized. There is something called the sacred activism. The sacred activism. There is activism and there is sacred activism. The difference between activism and sacred activism, that sacred activism is the motivation is the divine. We are active to fight for the rights, but we are motivated to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are obliged to work within the framework of God for the sake of God, not for, not for political gain, not to control, not, to, not for any, for the sake of God, sacred activism. So what you mentioned is part of this big project that the Muslim community has to get organized, dedicate resources, talents, energy. And what I mean talent is you, from the day one, we ask our children, what do you want to be? Doctor, engineer, IT, blah, 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 lawyer. I want to, I don't, I, I, I don't know. Everybody is programmed to be a machine in the society, to make money, to have a house, to, and guess what? And then what? This is what we need to ask our children from the day one, when they are three years old, four years old, let alone you guys who are 19, 18, 21. What do you want to do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are you willing to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this sacred activism has to be organized, has to be channeled. We have to have a vision. We have to send our talent, best talent. Of course, there is good in medical school, in the law, but we have also to learn the sacred activism. And no matter what we do in our life as a career, we have to dedicate time to fight for goodness, to be with those who are vulnerable, right? Regardless if they are Muslims or non-Muslims. So unfortunately, Muslims are, are, they are getting there. It's Alhamdulillah, we are waking up. We are, we are trying 
to open our eyes and our minds, but we are still very, very far from what our role should be in this society. So my call to all of you here is to, to sign up in this project, the sacred active activism. You have to have a role. You have to have a role in this society, positive role, whether in school, whether in work, whether in, in every level, we have to have a role. And this is a very big project that maybe, inshallah, we can organize a conference sometime soon, the sacred activism. What are the themes? What are the priorities? What is the framework that we have to work within, right? What are, what are the objectives? How to go about it? So this, this is a very, very serious and big project. But we have, inshallah ta'ala, to work toward it, inshallah ta'ala. Go ahead. With it. All right, it's working, it's working. <clears throat> okay, um, so we don't have a part three, unless you want to have a part three. No, we, we don't gotta, have part three. We got to kind of yeah. speed through these questions. Um, I think we touched this last time, however, someone is asking, um, so very quickly since we already touched okay. on it, that if we ban abortions or only allow it in certain states, then um, women are going to go to unsafe routes to get it, so for the greater good or to minimize harm, we Pro -choice. promote choice. I, I, again. The same answer that I provided for other arguments is we have to fight for the right of these women. We have to be active to in the states that they ban the, the, these, these legitimate cases to provide them with safe, with safe environment to do abortion. Yet that does not give us legitimate reason to accept all abortion together, period. Yes. In a day and age where we have come to vote for people in office due to living in this country, it comes down to supporting the individual that is pro-life or pro-choice. Like you have to obviously either vote for a Democrat or a Republican if you are someone who is voting. Is it okay for us to elect the candidate that is pro-choice since they would give us our religious rights more than the candidate that is pro-life would? Well, that is the question that I didn't want to discuss at all, because this is purely political position. I, when it comes to this position, I would like us, inshallah ta'ala, in the near future to organize another event, primarily about our engagement in politics. What is the standards? What are the guidelines? for engaging in politics in this society. I understand there is no right, there is no black and white. Every choice has some challenges, some problematic uh, consequences. So can we elect somebody because mostly they provide us our freedom, blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't answer this question right now. The reason why I don't want to answer the question right now because it is not as simple as this. It is not as simple as yes or no. I would like us, inshallah ta'ala, in the near future, I would like to bring more resources to our masjid to organize an event about what are the guidelines? What are the Islamic guidelines in, in political engagement in the United States? So, excuse me, I'm not going to answer this question. Y yes, what is your question? Bismillah. Yeah. So, this is just a comment I have, and if someone wants to critique it, they can. About the, the women who will illegally get an abortion if it's made illegal, I don't think that's convincing because if something is wrong, the idea that people will go extra lengths to do it shouldn't decide if it's legal or not. Like if someone wants to do drugs, it should still be illegal. 
because it'll dissuade the people who are law-abiding from doing it. So that's just my opinion. The only, the only difference is, I, I understand your point of view, but the only difference is you cannot say, you, it's, there, is, there is a serious difference between drugs and abortion. Abortion in so many cases is legitimate and women are victims. So if they are banned from, from, from doing it the safe way, the healthy way, they would resort automatically to a way that is very unsafe and unhealthy and might risk their life. So it is not fair for them to be sort of pushed to do it this way. This is why I said Muslims, ideally speaking, they should actually vocally fight and support these cases, these cases, not pro-choice, these cases in the states that ban all abortion altogether. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. So it's not all the same. Now, for those who are doing the haram abortion, this is like taking drugs, right? So we cannot legitimize drugs just because some people are thinking it unsafe way. Same thing, we cannot just legitimize and legalize uh, uh, abortion that is illegitimate, that is haram, just because women will doing will be doing it anyway and they might do it uh, the unsafe and unhealthy way so you understand the difference yes uh, there was any question here any question here i i answered that one i answered that one yes old one go ahead next one uh sorry where can we seek knowledge on topics like these at home uh, if you can't go to a scholar or someone knowledgeable for example, I am Maliki, where can I study and find the opinions of Imam Malik? Imam Malik, abortion altogether haram, if you want to know about Imam Malik. Even from day one, even before day one, couple minutes, life of the fetus is haram. You cannot even have birth control, Imam Malik, if you'd like to know about Imam Malik. So don't ask about it better for you. Rahimahum. Why? Because Imam Malik point of view that you don't control the, the, the lineage. Let it happen according to Allah's plan. And according to Imam Malik opinion is we are required at the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, to make a lot of children. To maximize the people who say La ilaha illallah. To maximize people who will enter Jannah. So it has a very beautiful approach. I know it's not perfect. It's not, uh, in my opinion, it's not even solid, it's not strong opinion. But I, if, since you asked about Imam Malik, he's the most extreme scholar when it comes to abortion. He has zero tolerance with abortion, right? Even plan B is haram, according to Imam Malik. For those of you who are familiar with plan B is. Uh, so according to Imam Malik, you cannot control the birth. Leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have reports from the Sahaba that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed birth control. The birth control that was available at that time. I don't want to get into details, these topics to study it in the fiqh. What are the birth control mechanism at the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Sahaba, they said, we were practicing birth control in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Imam, Imam Malik's opinion in this regard is not so strong. We do respect Imam Malik, Imam Malik is above our head, he's a great scholar, yet the vast majority of the ulama hold the opinion that I shared with you last week. Now, to answer the question, where do we find the answers for this question at home? You don't find these questions at home. You don't Google it. This is a distraction for our ummah. Everything can be Googled. You are not buying flight. It's not just booking.com, can I do abortion? No, no, it's not, it's not, this is life and death. You are not looking for, uh, for, uh, for uh, which is the website you look for houses? BRMB, BRMB, what they call it? Airbnb, Airbnb. That's, the, the dean is not Airbnb, come on. 
This is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to take it seriously. You have to go to the people of Nuh. You have to get out of your bed. Walk. Wake up in the morning. Wait for the scholars. The hard way. This, ya Yahya, khudhi al-kitab biquwa, Allah said. Oh Yahya, stand up. Take the, this knowledge seriously. That's not, this is not a game. The sacred knowledge, it's not just you are standing up in your phone and googling it, YouTube it, and then oh, I didn't like this, it's not being, uh, I like this one better. That makes more sense to me. You are not shopping. It's not Amazon. Right? This is deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah could have sent the deen to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam text message, sit in your bed, this is, do, this is the do's and this don't do's. No! Nabi Sam, he used, he used to be sweating when the revelation was revealed. It was so difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. It was very difficult revelation. He had to go to Ghar Hira for years and years and years, yet exposing himself to knowledge, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. After one day, the revelation came, the guidance came. So you have to cry at night. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open your hearts and your mind with guidance. You have to look, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you the righteous scholars that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. In, 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 in the market today, there are a variety of people who are called scholars. You can find whatever you want. It's like, it's like a shop. Ask Allah to find the people who are Voluble in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you cannot just stay at home and Google everything. No, it doesn't work like this. You have to take an effort, go to the people of knowledge, struggle. I know there are certain times you would like to listen to lecture, maybe inshallah one day we can, we are working on what we call it, maybe digital library in our masjid where all types of topics was in spirituality, in fiqh, in aqeedah, in all topics. There are resources like lectures and clips. This is a long-term project, inshallah ta'ala, they would like to work on. So our community find the resources for all topics, easy way. But that's not an alternative of seeking knowledge, the, the classical way, the traditional way, right? Because this is the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose for us. And Allah knows best. Yes. I have two questions. Question, any other question here? Okay, go ahead, brother. Okay. Um, I actually have a few comments and questions. Yeah. So, so the brother is talking about the Quran and um, there's actually a woman in Texas that actually said she likes the TV station position with the high up people in the building and the rapper said copy her because she said we should do that. The woman in Chicago is like, they should hire her to be like the TV station person. I'm just wondering if that's Hmm. So, so my reference to that book is that um, in this case, a part of the theology that states is that there actually is no inshallah to serve the same thing for Sort al-Mulk besides the same type of thing. Yeah, of course, of course. Not only Surah al-Mulk. Surah al-Mulk is so profound surah. But as a matter of fact, the characteristic of the Quran al kareem all about freeing human being from human being. Not only Surah Al-Mulk. So maybe in Surah Al-Mulk it is, there is so much emphasis about our, our Ubudiyya to our Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But that is so 
common in Quran Karim in so many surahs so that is why what we call it the sacred activism activism that is that is motivated initiated guided by revelation and inshallah this is what I was referring to a, a, a frame framework right we have to have framework we have to have guidelines these are the we work based on that so Surat Al-Mulk is one of them but there are so many so I, I like I like a statement said by one of our uh, Sahaba Radwanullahi Alayhim I think Sayyiduna uh, Abu Ayyub Al-Ansari or another Sahabi I forgot the name of the Sahabi but when they stood in front of one of the kings at that time he asked them about what is your mission what are you preaching what is your objective what are you after are you after kingdom are you after control after are you after authority what, what do you want to do you came all the way from Arabia to 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 Faris to yeah but what is what was the kingdom the Persian all what are you after do you like to control earth what are you after he answered by a very profound statement he said جِئْنَا لِنُخْرِجَ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ We are sent to free human being from being slaves to human being to being slave to the Lord of human beings. This is the summary of our mission. We came to liberate people. We came to liberate people from anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Starting from their temptations, from their desires. And then from the evil in the society. And then from dictators, from oppressors, from people who are controlling us here by social media. Right? They know what you like. They know what, and they keep bombarding you of products and this and that. This is slavery. This is slavery. Just we are not aware, but we are slaves. Right? So, yes, this is, this is what, what uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. What's the next question? So we have almost 10 minutes and we conclude inshallah ta'ala. Any, any other question? Yes, Surah Al-Mulk, but as I said, there are so many other surahs in the Quran came, so many verses, but Surah Al-Mulk is a very, very good foundation to this freedom that we are calling for. It's freedom from anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not only Surah Al-Mulk, this is the very essence of Islam. This is the very essence of La ilaha illallah. Yes. Um, the last question uh, is from last time. And it's um, if you can clarify how the scholars said before 40 days, um, those that allowed it for financial reasons, in light of the ayahs in the Quran that seem to be uh, very yeah. clear. So, the, the, if you remember last time, as we laid out the, the fiqhi explanation or the rulings. Of abortion we said we can approach abortion in three stages up to 40 days between 40 days and 120 days and after 120 days we said after 120 days absolutely prohibited except if the life of mother is at risk and if it is in case of rape there is a huge argument the ulama said, why would the person wait until 120 days? If there is a rape, the person should take care of this issue much earlier than this. However, after 120 days, absolutely pro uh, it's, it is prohibited. Before 40 days, it is lenient. As long as there is a good reason, a good reason. Underline, underline, good reason. Abortion is allowed before 40 days as long as there is good reason. Now the debate is between, 100, between 40 days and 120 days. What are the, the, uh, 
the abortion is not allowed unless there is a legitimate excuse so th there is a difference between a good reason and a legitimate excuse legitimate excuse has to be something more serious severe that allows you to abort a fetus but before 40 days it is only with a good reason now some ulama listed in the good reasons before 40 days is financial hardship can you abort a fetus before 40 days because of financial hardship before 40 days after 40 days of course no after 120 days, of course no some ulama said yes some so many ulama said no the question is how do these ulama say you can do it and the ayah in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wala taqtulu awladakum khashyata imlaq نحن نرزقكم وإياهم الله سبحانه وتعالى said don't kill your children out of fear of poverty we will provide for you and them meaning the ayah is saying don't kill your children العلماء who said it is okay to kill Allah they said Allah سبحانه وتعالى said don't kill your children he said before 40 days you are not killing anything before 40 days, you are not killing anything. It's not a human being. It is still macro. It is still dis it's discouraged. It is still disliked. It is still not the best thing. But you are not killing a human being. So it is a tawakkul issue. It is a reliance on Allah issue. You should rely on Allah. But if you choose to do it, you are not doing the best thing, but you are not doing something that is prohibited before 40 days so their argument is Allah prohibited killing and killing unless there is a soul in it we are not killing anything does that make sense does that make sense so this is why they said before 40 days it is macro it is what macro what does macro mean disliked disliked but later on becomes problematic later on becomes problematic so their true tawakkul the true reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should not do abortion because of financial hardship at any stage you might do abortion because the fetus will be born defected with severe challenges health wise because there is a lot risk and hardship on the mother that are legitimate reasons but because of finance, Allah is the provider. Allah is the provider. So if you are putting an end to pregnancy because of financial hardship, there is something wrong in your reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we say before 40 days, it is okay, but it is not, it is not the best. It is disliked, but it is not prohibited. Later on becomes serious and prohibited. Again, the only reason, guys, we are having this discussion is because you are exposed to this, unfortunately, on social media and otherwise. Uh, uh, and this is a very technical discussion. There is so much knowledge behind it. There is so much arguments behind it. Uh, but inshallah ta'ala i wish in these two sessions together inshallah ta'ala we have provided you with some basic understandings to deal with these challenges and we should do the same thing for every issues that is being discussed in our modern time so at least we have light we have guidance we are not just formulating views based on emotions based on desires based on inclinations right no we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can only formulate opinions based on our religiosity based on our ubudiya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any final questions khair inshallah ta'ala I hope it was good we are running out of time it's time huh? it's adhan it's the time for adhan al-maghrib I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial for everybody 
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, genuinely to provide each one of us guidance. Allahumma hadina fi man hadaytu. Allah guide us to the truth. O Allah provide us with insight. O Allah provide us with nur to see the truth as truth and follow it. Ya Allah provide us with nur, with light, with insight to see, to recognize falsehood as falsehood and avoid it. Ya Allah make us ibad of you Ya Allah. Ya Allah, free us from our desires. Ya Allah, liberate us from our temptations. Ya Allah, liberate us from worshipping our hawa. Ya Allah, make us worshippers of your majesty and your lordship. Ya Allah, Allahumma ja'alna ibaduk. Allahumma ja'alna ibaduk. Allahumma ja'alna ibaduk. Allahumma rizuqna al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. Allahumma thabitna ala deenik. Wa Allah, grant us steadfastness in your deen. Ya Allah, provide us with guidance that protect us with temptations, with the fitan, with the trial that we are going through in this time and age. Ya Allah, protect our deen. Ya Allah, protect our iman. Ya Allah, protect our deen and our iman from any challenge, from any trial. Ya Allah, allow us to die in state of Islam. Ya Allah, allow us to die in state of submission. Ya Allah, allow us to die in state that you are pleased with ya allah ya arhamar rahimin wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in jazakumullah khair wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh allahu akbar allah